In the Revishal Citizens Militia, there is only one Officer Superstar. This is his story. I think we put another point in suggestion. It's working well for us. Let's examine the body again, now that we've talked to Kuno and compressed the shit. he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. All right, it's a legendary challenge, but we get plus six because our shit is compressed, and we have the Kunified non-vomiter. Here we go. As you breathe in, we the did it. odor comes over you. It's a spell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Yeah, we stand in that order. We can, we can keep our chow down. It's a puzzle. What's hanging in front of you is a puzzle of decaying flesh, tattoos, and tendons. It's nasty. You can see flies here. And is this bone? This looks weird, like, like he's wearing some kind of shoe and and leggings anyway do they always do that they do after seven days yes we are deep in decomposition here all right let's step closer the man before you is naked but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots his skin is greenish marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity a fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders the cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. And he is wearing boots. All right, let's inspect those boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you. Mm -hmm out of place somehow. They do, they look like stormtroopers boots. These are clearly not boots. They're armor, possibly part of a larger set. Yeah, he was wearing armor. It's armor he was stripped of. This guy's a stormtrooper? Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Oh, thanks Kim for clearing that up with your erudition, I guess. Oh, the Lieutenant uses a memo technique, A6. That's not just any notebook. It's a classic. <laughs> nice. We seem to have a little ADD going on. Thanks. That's super useful to know. It's all you, baby. What kind of armor is that exactly, Encyclopedia? A ceramic plate. Zirconium oh. dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Let's knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Let's just say sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Isn't that how Kevlar works? Like whirls of floorboards. The design looks organic, influenced by highly resistant wood materials, like lignum vitae and ebony, perhaps. Cool, cool. What does this remind me of? If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross sections would look like. Let's run our fingers over the line. The smooth, glossy surface fractures into ever more intricate interconnections. Peeking on the right sabaton, where you notice the whirls are in the shape of a letter and number combination E50 100 1000. Looks like there's a serial number on the right sabaton. Good. Can you read it to me? He tips the drying ballpoint of his pen on his tongue. X54156745678 222. Let's lie. Why would we lie in this situation? This is not acting. This is just being a super douche. I don't think we lie. Kim may be annoying, but I don't think we'd lie. We have a make and a number. That's something. We can use the radio in my kinema when we're done. Either station can chase it for us. 
Where's the rest of it? Scavenged by the locals? Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. He's talking about Kuno. If you wear those pieces, it will help me protect your mortal coil. Why? Does my mortal coil need protecting? Yes. Bullets will fly. They always do. And the coil is fleshy and mush and permeable. Cast it in ceramic shell. Resist death. Understood. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form. Ageless and synthetic. The material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. The lieutenant draws a line in the condensation on the ceramic with his index finger. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Wow. For the northwest region of Revachol, an officer's average yearly income is 5,500 real, unadjusted for rank. Wait, my yearly pay is 5,500 real? Not too much, yes. Sounds puny. No wonder I can't pay my hostel bill. It's a sorry situation, I agree. How could this man afford such expensive hardware? That's for us to find out. Mr. Gart implied he was security personnel for the harbor company. This confirms my own assumptions. These look pretty advanced for a security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Let's pull the boot off. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Stop! The lieutenant's voice is sharp. He looks at you with the boot under your arm. Pig's gonna pull his head off. <coughs> Brain so! Oh, this is a bad idea, isn't it? You're going to pull his head off. Ugh, nasty. Do it, homo! Do what? Pull his head off. There's no point performing an autopsy if you do. We have compromised the coroner's case. Indeed. From this angle, it does look like the neck isn't going to take much more. Being dead for a week has all but liquefied his muscles. That's nasty. What are you trying to achieve anyway? Why are you hanging on to that boot? These boots would go super well with my bell-bottom pants. You do understand the boots are steeped in cadaverine odor, don't you? So are my pants. You have a point there, detective. You have a point. But... The lieutenant taps on the boot. There's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They are fused to his feet now. Why do you think the locals haven't scavenged them yet? You're sure there's a way to peel them off. But first, the body needs to be down. And second, it would probably be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. We'll accept that task. The anticipation makes you crack your fingers. Feels nice. Nice and cracky. <laughs> nice. Okay, we got it. Processing will take care of them. With the situation in the morgue, it will yield nothing. But we must pick our fight. Should we continue? Let's back off and look at the, the cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Let's inspect the belt. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt, big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six-rotor airships. Don't ask me how I know, but this is a lashing belt used for airlifting cargo. Airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. Apparently this is the reinforced kind for air transport. My brain tells me so. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. How did they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points to the buckle tying the belt to the branch above. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. That would be my guess too. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. They sure wanted him to stay up there. The rope is reinforced with steel wire. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring, parallel strands. This makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. Sure does. We're assuming dock workers from the harbor did it. 
I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. You? I feel like it was something else. Yes, it often is. This bell worries me. Let's back off and look at the corpse. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. Let's inspect those tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. Is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. Hmm. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something here. So am I. A sudden ringing fills the air as Lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. Hmm. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Let's let him work. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. He produces two metal-capped ampules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I have only two ampules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. Then... A sound. A Ooh. shrill flash. Followed Dang. by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper. Rolling out. Jesus, I think I broke my retinas too. That was heinous. In case we need it. The lieutenant says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. On it, a color-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. Cool machine. Yes. It is pretty cool, isn't it? He slides the camera closed and tucks it away on his belt. What do we need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Sure. Just don't lose it. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. I wonder if we're going to lose it. The glossy eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. Opportunistic organisms, nasty. Look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. So we have a white check of Inland Empire. It's medium, but we only have a 28% chance. I think we should just try it and see. Tell me, who are you, dead man? The corpse is dead silent. You have no idea why you just said that. Because it would have been cool ass if we could figure out who he was. Who is he? He is male, 40 to 50, with an athletic build. Thanks, Kim. Thanks. Well, we'll get more Inland Empire, because I want to try that. I think that'd be cool. The corpse looks right through you as you distance yourself from its stench. Eyes like a shark. Let's squint and take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? See, we are an effective detective. Let's observe. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. His face and hands are pink thighs, too. I see it. His neck, too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. 
Relax your eyes. The monster comes back into focus, an explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. That's fucking nasty. So what do you think? Lee was upright after death. His hands, feet, and neck are discolored. Agreed. Especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports her hanging. You would still like the hypostasis marks in the neck to be a bit more pronounced. For some reason, my brain would like the pink to be more pronounced, especially in the neck. Maybe it looks faint to you? It could be more pronounced, actually. Du mon noté. Maybe he was strangled by someone? Yes, there's always a chance we are wrong. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. Something is coming out of the him. The pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. That's nasty. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? <sighs> Talking about shit. Maybe he went to the toilet sometime before death? Maybe. He really he doesn't really want to dwell on it too long. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I don't think that's true. They do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little sport. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means you fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal like. I'm not saying this. This is obnoxious after all this shit. Back off and catch your breath. But there is no breath to catch. Only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. So how do we get him down? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's down. Step back and have another look first. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Yeah, I think we're good. Yep, the preliminary examination is done. Let's get him down from there. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he thought. Yeah, rhetoric, tell him the truth. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. Maybe we should saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way. With less falling down of trees. I'm out of ideas. Let's have another look at hmm. him. No, we need to talk about getting him down. Yes, we do. Yeah, maybe we can ask for help from the heart. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be suspect in this case. Yeah. It seems like a dangerous route to go it down. It definitely does. I would really prefer if there was another way. These people might have an agenda. All right, let's reconsider for but a second. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt like chicken. On a skewer. Is there someone else who can do it? Someone else? You mean like the police? Maybe we have somebody who does this for us, Kim, you fucking asshole. What was that about processing then? Weren't they supposed to take care of the boots? Why don't they help? Can't the boys from processing take care of this? No. Why? Think of the boys from processing as murderers. Only instead of people, they murder crime scenes. Processing is a wrecking crew. They know how to commission off items and how to work the incinerator in the morgue. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, fast. Okay, it's now 2100 hours, which means we can go back to the Whirling and Rags and sleep. M maybe, if we can get in there. I'm gonna say it, maybe we could shoot him down? Yeah! Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his head off! How? Oh. Where the buckle ties the rope to the branch. That's a good spot to aim. There. The buckle holds the belt together. Where? Ah, yes, I see. If the shot hits that, there might be a chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. I'd like to entertain the Kuno with a punch. Of course, we failed to do that before. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. I'm going to let the lieutenant do it because our hand-eye coordination is garbage. Take the shot, lieutenant. What's the worst thing that could happen? I'll blow his head off. Take it! 
Kid, that is bad. Take the shot. That's uh, that is the worst thing that could happen. Yeah, take the shot. Kuno wants some of that shit. Maybe we could shoot Kuno first. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. That's a Kiel A9090 armistice, mass-produced muzzle loader, ascetic, frugal, one of the most common firearms in the world. This is where encyclopedia is interesting. He then steps back and assumes the fellow Stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Easy does it, partner. He's gonna fucking me! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. Yeah, he fucking missed. Fucking idiot! Mukaba asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? Alright, it's okay, man. Kuno's sorry too. Kuno feels sorry for the Beano clad. The lieutenant doesn't say a word, just looks at the gun in his hand. I'm gonna say, what now? We don't have a gun. We don't have a gun. We could shoot. We could shoot Kim's gun. I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. Can I have the gun? I should try. It's bad as it is. Us shooting firearms like punks. He pauses, then shrugs and proceeds to load the pistolet. I think it's a terrible idea. We have a two hand-eye coordination. Go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> I only have one gun! This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. I think we need to shoot Kuno. Yeah, take it, you fucking banani poika! Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth! Feel the weight first. The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is oh, surprisingly bakelite. light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth! Bakelite is a precursor to plastic. I had some once, uh, like some poker chips. They were cool, but very brittle. Let's point the gun at the belt. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Let's do it. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your f mouth? At least you won't miss. Uh, we have a 17% chance of doing this. Um, close your left eye first or point the gun at Kuno S. Let's close our left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the evening light as the corpse slowly rotates. Corpse is in fact slowly rotating a little bit. The slow movement of the branch in the wind and your shoulders directing the gun sink up, dancing hypnotically. <laughs> Look, he's crying. You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? Wow. Now we have a 28% chance. I don't see him doing this. I see him more likely to point the gun at Kuno S, especially after he missed hitting Kuno before. Do it! F set me free! Don't. Feel the lieutenant's hand on your shoulder. Do it! Wow. We can shoot the kid. We have an 8% chance. We're not doing it. Fuck you, little shit. Put it right here, Mulka! Right here! Let's, uh, we're not doing it. Point the gun at the belt. Intense shit, copper! Intense, it was pathetic. Yeah, we're we're not taking this shot. 17% is not good enough. And then also it's actually it was 28, but we responded to provocation, so we lose one point. And it's red, we can't retry it. it changes the course of the game. No, we're gonna give the gun back to Kim. The lieutenant takes the gun carefully from you and holsters it. His eyes are narrow and he doesn't comment on your antics. Why? Because we showed good judgment? <laughs> shoot me didn't shoot himself in the mouth okay. i suggest we go to the harbor and ask the leader of the union to help us with the body i would have preferred us not to owe the union anything but we clearly cannot do this ourselves let's go we got a whole bunch of things run the number on the victim's armor 
right? We can use Kim's shortwave in his car. Where's the rest of the armor? We'll ask Kuno. Getting the hangman's boots. Uh, we need to get the boots off the victim's feet, but we have to get the body down. The autopsy has to be finished, and Kim has to be absent because he wouldn't approve. The victim's tattoos. Ask around about ta the tattoo's possible meaning. And getting the body down. We have to ask the harbor. Uh, we have to ask for Everett Claire's help. I wonder if the old guy who had the sandwich could help us. Because he's supposedly friends with Everett. So you tried to kill Kuno's Gale? What's up with that? You want to talk about it? I think we've all moved past that by now, Kuno. Not all of us. Acts like that stick with you for a while. No one's moving anywhere. Do this shit again. And Kuno's going to climb in your room at night with a knife. He points towards the whirling in rags and whispers. Kuno knows where you sleep. The pig who fucked his window up. I'm going to climb in through that balcony. Put the fucking knife in you. Yeah. I've been in your room. Sire, the boy has not really been in thine room. Tis but a falsification. Oh, we caught him in a lie. But you and Kuno are good for now, pals. Shoot that shit at Kuno. Let's have a jolly time. You don't threaten me. One word out of you, pig shite, and you're locked out of the Kuno experience forever. You hear me? You hear the Kuno? Nod, we hear him, because I don't want to risk our relationship with Kuno. And you're back in business with the Kuno. Now what is it? Hmm, how do we ask him about the armor? Okay, I'm off. All right, let's go to Kim's car. Let's see if the gardener has anything to say. I can't believe it's snowing again. It felt like springtime just a few days ago. I've investigated the body. Shouldn't be long till we get it oh. down. Okay. Thanks for keeping me in the know, sir. All right, I have to run. We leveled up again. I'm inclined to keep going with suggestion. I think it's going to help us. Might help us with the union people too. I like it. We're going to go for it. And then next one, I think we're going to put in drama. Inside. You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Let's pick up the radio again. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Could you run a serial number from a pair of armored boots for me? Sir, officer. What's the number? And the make of the armor, if you know it. E50.100.1000. The make and model of the armor is Fairweather T500VE. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. Okay. The International Collaboration Police, ICP, is an inter isolary law enforcement service. The crown jewel in the moral intern diadem, alongside EPIS and the coalition government. 57th, over and out. And this is where we'll leave it for today. Tune in next time when we will explore the rest of the Martinez waterfront. Thanks again for joining me. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. And of course, make sure to have your pet spayed or neutered, but not both.